Welcome everybody to today's webinar called Easy Setup of Robotech Controllers. My name is Daniel Simons and I'm very excited to introduce you to our esteemed colleagues Harris and Atanasios in a minute. Before I do that, I want to give you some real quick information about the procedures of today's webinar. You might have noticed that you're all muted and this is an intention. The only folks you're going to hear talking is um, Atanasios, Horace, and myself. However, you have the chance to enter your questions and remarks at the bottom field on the right side of your screen. We will monitor your questions and address most likely at the very end when we go to the Q&A session. We will also fade in some polls, two polls, uh, between the different sequences where we ask you to answer a few questions. This is today's agenda. In a moment, we will introduce ourselves. Then Harris will give some insights about the new Generation 4 features, which I'm quite curious about. And then we'll hear about the order tuning and setup of the motor controller from Robotech. We will also hear how you get support and we'll hear about the safety brake switch system. Finally, we will have enough time for the Q&A session. This is your chance to get first-hand answers from the experts. Let's start. Harris, do you want to share some words about you? We do not hear you. Maybe Atanasios, you want to jump in? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, now we hear you. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm Athanasius Exovanos. I'm the field, the application engineering manager for Robotic Greece. I joined Robotic 2020. Since then, we try to help our customer incorporate our products to their applications. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. I am uh, Haris Katsidis, application engineer for Robotech. I have had the chance to take part in many exciting projects globally. And also I have worked extensively with our colleagues in Nancy Fister. I'm really glad to be here today. So uh, on to you, Daniel. Thank you. My name is Daniel Simons. I'm product manager of the Anx and Fister's Senses and Power. Uh, I have a background in engineering, mechanical engineering, mechatronics, and I've worked several years in product development, mainly in the field of uh, building automation and medical devices. Now you should see the first poll on your screen with the first question. Are you producing HUEs or AMRs? Answer that with yes or no. And uh, click submit vote. Then you get to the second question. Are you soon starting a project with Robotech controllers? Yes or no. And then again, submit vote. Now I'd like to hand over to Harris, who's going to tell us about the Generation 4 features. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. So, so uh, uh, let us kick, our, kick start the webinar with a short presentation, during which we will uh, be able to review the new generation of robotic uh, brushless motor drives, as well as the new capabilities that have been implemented. So, taking a look at the available products you can see on the right, which are some of our most popular models, uh, the SBLG2360, the FBLG2360, the GBLG2660, 
uh, that are uh, currently on the market and uh, available for uh, for our customers. So then uh, all our brushless models come in either dual or single channel configurations with dual brushless uh, uh, channel controllers coming with the flexibility to change between single and uh, dual uh, channel configuration just by adjusting the firmware without uh, making any changes to your hardware. Uh, for your applications, we provide a plethora of operating modes such as open loop, then uh, for torque control, we offer closed loop torque. We have speed and speed position modes for speed control, uh, closed loop count position mode as a traditional position mode. And then for steering, we provide modes as, such as position relative and position tracking. Uh, additionally, on the supported sensors, we also provide a big uh, plethora of options such as hole sensors, sine cos, resolvers, quadrature encoders, SSI sensors. We also provide, are going to provide sensorless, which is coming soon. So please provide your application and motor details for us to be able to investigate uh, each case separately and to pro provide you with uh, feedback. And then we also provide analog and RC inputs uh, to be used just as feedback. Mm -hmm. On the communication protocols, we currently support uh, can open and serial protocols, but in the future, we will also include uh, Profinet, Ethercat, and Ethernet IP to our range. So stay tuned for that. Let us go to the next page. Uh, here, we will be able to see a few more details regarding the new features on the RoboG4 drives. So what we have is uh, motor characterization, which in cases that you do not have uh, a motor data sheet or in general, the resistance inductance uh, values are missing from the data sheet of the motor manufacturer. You can use this uh, uh, feature to uh, calculate them with uh, our controller. Then we have the decoupling current control, which increases current responsiveness. We have improved scripting capabilities compared to the old generation. Adaptive PI speed control, which uh, adapts dynamically the gains uh, according to the load that you have in your system. Then we have uh, the speed auto tuning, which we will cover later in the section in another section of the webinar. Uh, 16 kilohertz torque and 1 kilohertz uh, speed and position control. Uh, a notch filter, which is to be added, that will eliminate vibrations at resonant frequency. It's uh, quite a common issue and uh, a cogging compensation which will be added as well which allows for smoother rotation at slow speeds so let us continue to the next one uh, uh, another two very useful features is the automatic field weakening it adds uh, additional operating speed range without having to manually adjust any configuration to the controller and then we have the acceleration and velocity fit forward uh, control, which is uh, very important as it increases the responsiveness in the system in both speed and position control. Uh, all these uh, great features that we covered will also be available to our new Drive Plus motor package, the ILD16. Uh, when this product becomes available, it will have an IP54 rating and will feature uh, it will and will feature all the connectivity that we previously spoke about, all the features of the RoboG4 generation, and also STO. It will also be paired with a high-quality NIDEC motor for your uh, applications. Now I present to you a very useful new module that we have uh, developed and can, can be added to any system. It's the safety brake switch, which operates by triggering an electric PWM braking of the motor whenever uh, STO triggers in the system. This allows for the vehicle to stop in a way shorter distance than what it would do with, uh, by just using STO. And it also allows for this stop to happen in a safety certified manner. This is very important as it can add safety in your system and save, uh, uh, and save many cases that might uh, uh, end up in you having either material or uh, 
person uh, losses. So we will watch a video later with uh, on, on this particular module that will allow you to get more information about it. So let us go to the next slide, which um, so now let us uh, enjoy the video that our colleagues have created for the easy setup and speed auto tuning wizard. Uh, you will find a lot of uh, interesting information uh, there. And also it's a very detailed guide on how you should uh, implement the auto tuning wizard. So back to you, Daniel. Sorry, Daniel, you're muted. Thank you, Harris. Very interesting. We uh, will start a video about the uh, drives configuration and auto tuning right now. Hello, and welcome to the Robotech training session on our automatic motor sensor and tuning setup wizard for our Robo G4 motor drives. I'm happy to be your guide as we delve into the intricacies of optimizing motor performance in an industrial setting. During this training, we will utilize a pair of brushless DC NEDEC motors and a Robo G4 drive, which we will configure and tune using the automated wizard. The automated process saves development time and ensures that optimal motor performance is achieved, thus improving application productivity and accuracy. The motor we will be using is equipped with a pair of Hall and encoder sensors, which we will set up and calibrate using the automated wizard. While we will be using these specific sensors, the wizard is compatible with all types of sensors supported by Robotech drives. To begin, we will first ensure our hardware is correctly connected. We must ensure our motor cables are connected according to the motor and controller data sheet. The Hall sensors and encoders are connected to the corresponding Molex connector and DB25 port respectively. The controller should be connected to a power source and powered on, and the controller should be connected via the mini USB port to your PC. Once the prior steps are followed, we can then launch the RoboRun Plus version 3.0 PC software in which we can connect to the controller. We're now presented with a pop-up window asking if we would like to read the controller configuration. Click no, as there is no prior drive configuration needed at this step, since the wizard will assist in the configuration of the system. From here, we can then select the motor sensor and tuning setup button from the configuration tab of RoboRun Plus. Once inside the tuning wizard, we are welcomed on the first page with an overview of what the wizard will accomplish. We could go ahead and then click next. We are prompted to ensure that the motor is free to move and that all load is disconnected along with some warnings about motor movement and sensor connections. At this point, our AGV is lifted with no load on the motors, allowing them to freely rotate. We can then click Next. In the next page, we are presented with the motor configuration screen. For this, we will need to reference our motor data sheet to obtain the essential parameters. The first parameter is the number of pole pairs. If the data sheet lists the number of poles instead of the pole pairs, you simply divide the number by two. In our case, our data sheet lists 10 poles, and thus we divide it by two to get five pole pairs. Next is the amps limit, which is the maximum current that the drive is allowed to provide to the motor. This should be set as the maximum current of the motor. Then we adjust the reference seek power, which is the current that will be consumed during the calibration of the motor's sensor and must be set to the motor's nominal current. Our motor is rated for 21.6 amps. The motor direction will need to be set depending on the application. Since we are using our dual channel motor controller in an AGV application, we will set channel one as inverted. Please note that in electric vehicle applications using differential drive, Setting one motor direction as direct and the other as inverted will result in the vehicle moving straight when a positive motor command is issued for both motors. The actual direction of each motor may vary depending on the motor phase sequence. Therefore, always test with care. The Molex input is used as hall sensors. Since our motors incorporated hall sensor will be connected here, 
Next, we set up our sinusoidal angle sensor to Hall plus encoder. Using this combination of both sensors allows for the most precise commutation and ensures the most accurate results. Lastly, set the encoder's resolution. This is the number of the sensor's pulses per revolution. Our motor has 4,096 pulses per revolution. We can then click Next. The system will recognize we are utilizing trapezoidal switching mode and will recommend we switch to sinusoidal commutation, which provides quieter motor performance with less torque ripple. So we click Yes. We will then be presented with the motor sensor setup setup procedure, which will align the sensor with the motor phases. Click the Run Setup Procedure button. The motor will move slightly during this step. Let this finish. Note that in dual channel controllers, the motor sensor setup will not be established if both motor sensors are not connected in both channels. In case a configuration wizard is used to configure only one channel, the sensor error detection on the unused channel should be disabled. We can then click Next. We're now prompted to perform the same task for channel two, which we will accept and perform. So we finished with the motor sensor setup, which is very important part of the configuration. And it's very important this to, to be performed without load. And uh, having uh, done this uh, part uh, successfully, it allows us to control the motor in the most optimal way. So let's see now about the current loop tuning. We are now presented with the current loop auto-tuning portion of the wizard, which assists with configuring the PI gains of the field-oriented control, or FOC, which is also the current control loop. The FOC loop utilizes a cascaded control loop with other operating modes, such as speed and position modes, so its configuration is necessary. Please note the warnings on this page about the motor being free to move without any load and the motor movement and noise warning. Click Next. We already have our amps limit and reference seek power set. We have two options at this point. If we don't know the inductance and resistance values of our motor, we can press start to run the auto motor characterization. This procedure will estimate the motor resistance and inductance, essential parameters for the FOC PI tuning. If we do know the parameters, we can click the manual entry bubble and then insert the values. Please note that when inserting the values manually, you should refer to the phase and not phase-to-phase -phase measurements of the inductance and resistance. If the phase-to-phase -phase measurement are provided, divide them by two. Pay attention to the units as the utility uses milliohm and microhenry. You should always prefer the manual entry option if the data sheet values are available. For this demonstration, we will use the auto motor characterization function by clicking start. The motor drive will supply the motor with alternating voltage and measure the current to estimate the motor specifications. This will take some time. Once complete, click Next. Here you will be requested to select an FOC bandwidth. The FOC bandwidth determines the responsiveness of the current loop. We will start by selecting the slowest possible bandwidth of 50 Hz. This will not be the final setting, but we will use it to explore the impact of different bandwidth settings on the current response. At this point, we are locking our rotor using the motor's built-in electromechanical brakes to allow for an easier time applying the motor current. While this will provide an easier time with the graphing, it is not required and you will still get optimal results without locking the rotor.
Click Next. On the next screen, we can configure an input waveform and monitor the current response of the motor. Some waveform settings are adjustable, such as the amplitude, period, and the number of repeats. Change the default period to 50 milliseconds to prevent the rotor from moving when applying the command. Avoiding movement of the rotor will allow the motor current to reach the target value easier. Also, in the graph settings, we can adjust the monitoring variables. For this tuning, we will go ahead and remove the motor power and encoder speed to facilitate easier monitoring of the motor current. Now click the Run Waveform button. The ramped command 1 represents a desired motor current, and the FOC torque amps 1 represent the motor current component that is responsible for the motor torque. The flux amps 1 is a motor current component that controls the magnetic flux in the motor and should be kept close to zero. The torque amp should follow the ramped command to provide tighter control. Observe how different current bandwidths improve the current response of which lower bandwidths have a lower current rise time. Avoid using bandwidths of the aggressive range as they will create more oscillations when the speed or position mode is used. Once the torque amps follow the ramp command in a fast and stable manner by adjusting the bandwidth, we can then click Next. As you can see, the torque amps are inverted compared to the ramp command. This is due to setting inverted earlier in the settings. On the next screen, we are presented with our summary of the parameters that were set during the process. Click Save and Next. We will then be prompted to follow the same process for Channel 2, which we will accept and perform. It should be noted the motor brake should be released to perform the motor characterization of Channel 2. At this point, the motor brake is engaged to perform the FOC tuning. This is very important part also, and the uh, we have to do it even we need to use only speed uh, mode because sometimes uh, our customer wonder like go directly to speed mode and miss the current loop tuning that's why we put it in this wizard so it can be not omitted in order to have the best control of the current we need to have also the current loop even if you use speed uh, mode in our application uh, this way we control better the current and uh, the torque and avoid the current, uh, high currents and things like this. So let's see now the speed loop tuning. We're now presented with the speed loop auto tuning portion of the wizard. Please note the warnings on this page about needing the previous steps to be properly configured. The motor should now be installed with load attached along with space for the motor movement. In our case, we will now place the AGV on the ground to proceed. The motor will operate in closed loop speed mode. The power source should be capable of absorbing the regenerative energy during the motor deceleration, or you should incorporate a shunt regulator. Click Next. At the next page, we need to configure some things. Since this is a dual motor AGV, we want to use concurrent target to make sure the motors are moving at the same time. In our case, where both encoder and hall sensors are available in the motor, we will select the sensor with the higher resolution as the feedback, which in this case is the encoder. Click Next. On the next screen, we have more motor parameters to set. We need to change the movement to linear, traction to AGV traction, where the linear movement will allow us to set a safety zone radius in meters. We then need to set the wheel radius, gearbox ratio, and wheelbase length. 
The gearbox ratio can be found in the motor data sheet. We see that the gear ratio is 9 to 1, and thus we will set a value of 9. We then need to finish the motor parameters. We set the max speed, then we set the acceleration and deceleration values, which 2000 in this case should be acceptable for this application. Please note that higher acceleration and deceleration values require more current for motion. Excessively high values may demand current levels that exceed what the drive can provide or surpass the motor safe operational ratings. Ensure that the desired motion profile is compatible with the electrical capabilities of the system. Here, the amp, uh, the amp limit should be according to the actual load in order the algorithm to have better results. It's important to set the motor torque constant, which is measured in Newton meters per RMS amp. This parameter is used in torque control mode to provide the direct torque command. The drive will calculate the required motor current based on this parameter. Pay attention to the units as they are in Newton meters per RMS amps. Click next. On the next page of the speed loop auto tuning, we must ensure our brakes are released as the motors will run. Select the start PI tuning button and wait for this process to finish in which the motors will run. Once finished and the gains are configured, select Next. On the next page, we will select the speed loop bandwidth. We recommend starting at the bandwidth located in the green zone to start. Select Next. We are once again presented with a graph of the system. This will plot the sensor speed and ramp command to visualize the step response of the system. We will want to ensure the sensor speed follows the ramp command by adjusting the speed loop bandwidth from the speed gains tab. For this, we will demonstrate performance at different bandwidths. Once the performance is within spec where the ramped command is followed by the motor speed, we can then press next. This will bring up the ramped command response graph in which we will again ensure the sensor speed is following the ramped command. Should this need adjustment, adjust the speed loop bandwidth from the speed gains tab until the performance is within spec. For this test, we will reduce the time period that this will run as our AGV doesn't need to run for as long. We will also change the encoder speed percent to feedback to give more accurate results for the ramped command response. Again, once the performance is within spec and the feedback follows the ramp command, we can then press next. So here we fine tune, we change the bandwidth and we can have better response according to our application demands. You see how the response is coming closer to the command as the bandwidth is increased. As we can see from the graph, our feedback closely follows the ramp command. With the performance within spec, we can press next. This will present a summary window summarizing all the configuration parameters that are changed for the system. Click save and finish to finish the auto tuning process. We can then run our AGV using the Run tab within RoboRun Plus, in which it will run in closed-loop speed mode, allowing for accurate movement of the system. For safe AGV operation from the Run tab, it is preferable to use console commands and configure the watchdog timer to disable motor power after a specified time to reduce the risk of unwanted movement. Let's set the watchdog timer to 1.5 seconds via console box at the bottom of the Run tab. To enable control via console commands, the command slider must be muted. 
we will use the speed serial command to issue a motor speed and RPM to both motors. By using an underscore, a speed command can be sent to both motors simultaneously. Note that depending on the motor's direction, opposite commands might need to be sent to each motor to allow the AGV to move in a straight line. The command can then be reversed to move in the opposite direction. This concludes our demonstration. Thank you for watching. If you have further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our talented field application engineers who will be happy to assist should trouble arise. So that was quite impressive. It only took 20 to 30 minutes to set up the whole um, controller. Fine tuning can still be done afterwards, but um, the uh, setup is working as we saw. Now we'll change to the next video, which is about uh, how you get support. Hello and welcome to this demonstration of how to make a support request with Robotech. Let's quickly go through the required steps. Step 1. Access the Robotech's online knowledge base. Visit robotech.freshdesk.com and search through the knowledge base. There, you can explore various technical articles, including how-tos and troubleshooting guides. Make sure that you review the detailed troubleshooting guides covering all fault, motor, and status flags. Visit www.robotech.com and try our AI-based documentation search engine. This engine will search through our knowledge base and direct you to the respective sections that contain the answers. Additionally, the GPT plugin will provide a comprehensive response. Step 2. Gather all required information. If no suitable solution is found by referring to the online knowledge base, proceed by collecting all required information to open a support ticket. Gathering as much information as possible is crucial, as it helps speed up the resolution process. You will need Problem-related information Description – What exactly is going wrong? Occurrence – When and under what circumstances does the problem occur? Frequency – How often does this issue arise? Impact – How many drives are affected? Logs – Include logs that show related variables and any fault flags triggered. The logs can be recorded through the Roborin Plus Utility Run tab or the console. For more information about recording logs through console, view our how-to articles on robotech.freshdesk.com. System-related information. Location. Is the system at the final customer's site or still in development? System overview. What devices are involved and what roles do they play? Supporting documents, connection diagrams and device manuals can be very helpful especially in case of unexpected hardware failures. Including the motor data sheet is absolutely required as it provides crucial technical specifications. Additionally, the BMS manual may be needed depending on the specific scenario. Drive-related information. Versions, what are the hardware and firmware versions? The hardware revision is indicated on the motor drive label and the firmware version can be identified by looking at the bottom right corner of the Roborin Plus utility. Diagnostics include the drive's diagnostics log. This can be obtained by clicking the Collect Diagnostics button on the Roborin Plus utility configuration tab. Configuration Attach the configuration profile of the drive. This can be acquired by clicking Save Profile to Disk. The configuration profile is included also in the diagnostics log. Scripts include any scripts if used in the drive. Serial numbers add the serial numbers of affected devices. The serial number is indicated on the motor drive label. Don't hesitate to provide any additional information that you believe to be relevant to the problem. Step 3 Visit the Robotech support portal at www.robotech.com. 
Before you begin to fill out the support form, be sure to utilize the search articles tab to search once again for related how-tos and troubleshooting articles using relevant keywords. Click Show All Results option to access the complete support knowledge base. If none of these solutions is relevant to your problem, proceed to fill in the support form. As you enter the subject, the system will again suggest relevant articles to assist you. State the problem as clearly as possible, including all available information as described in Step 1. Set the inquiry type. Your company name. Region. Product type. Firmware revision. Product model. And serial number. After submitting the form, a technical support ticket will be created and assigned to a field application engineer, FAE, based on your region. It is very important to use the support portal to create a new ticket. Do not directly reply to old tickets or email directly to our support address, as this can reopen old tickets or create unassigned ones, causing your request to be overlooked. Once the ticket is created, your assigned FAE will reach out to guide you through troubleshooting. Following their instructions promptly will help resolve your issue faster. If required, the FAE may request a remote session. These are preferably conducted through TeamViewer or any desk. Ensure you have USB access to the drive. A laptop integrated into the system with the capability to move along with it. Ensure that the laptop is fully charged and equipped with a battery efficient enough to last throughout the entire session. An available engineer with comprehensive system knowledge for operational support. The customer is responsible for monitoring the working environment and must have the capability to immediately halt the system if any potentially dangerous behavior is observed. Tools for the session may include the latest Roborin Plus utility, a multimeter, and occasionally a clamp meter and an oscilloscope. Suspected hardware issues, if hardware nonconformance is suspected, an FAE will conduct a remote evaluation or guide you through diagnostic tests to determine the failure type and suggest corrective actions. If the nonconformance is confirmed, within warranty, and not due to customer mishandling, an RMA will be issued for a free replacement. By following these guidelines, you ensure a smooth and efficient support experience with Robotech. Looking forward to assisting you. Thanks for that, it was quite helpful. Um, I'd like to mention here that it's important that you always update to the latest uh, firmware version before you um, do uh, the analyzing. And um, first level support is always um, angst and fists and sensors and power. It's very important for, for having uh, quick solutions of the problems you face to have uh, as much information from the beginning. That's why we prepared this video, uh, because it, it ends up having a faster resolution of uh, what you want to deal with, what you're dealing with. And now our uh, next video is about a product uh, that came as a need from many HV manufacturers that wanted to decelerate safety the vehicle and avoid uh, injuries and uh, damages so let's let's see it uh how the video starts yeah it, it's loading it will come in a moment okay. Okay. yeah so sbs can be oh. An emergency stop mechanism is an essential feature for any mobile robot.
Typically, it consists of an obstacle detection sensor, such as a LiDAR, and a safety PLC that receives the sensor signals and initiates the necessary actions to halt the motors. Key reasons to implement an emergency stop include prevention of harm to individuals, protection of goods and infrastructure, mitigation of legal and financial risks, and compliance with industry standards. Under normal operation, the motor drive halts the motor according to a predefined deceleration profile. However, the drive will not be capable of stopping the motor in any of the following situations, command signal error, sensor feedback inaccuracy, and control system integrity issues. Numerous motor drives, Robotech included, support Safe Torque Off, STO, which employs fail-safe circuitry certified to deactivate the power stage safely in the event of an emergency. This typically encompasses a comprehensive diagnostic system with extensive coverage to monitor operational status and ensure problem-free operation. Triggering the STO will stop the motor independently of the drive state or motor command, even in the event of a hardware failure. When STO is enabled, the outcome is similar to disconnecting the motor phases. However, this method may not be the safest option. When STO is activated, the motor movement is limited only by the friction of its components. This may present a risk to individuals or equipment since the AGV could require several meters to come to a complete stop. To mitigate safety risks, the motor must engage active braking when the STO is triggered. One solution is to short-circuit the motor phases when the STO has been triggered. The back EMF of the motor will generate a current in the motor windings, creating a braking torque. Robotech Safety Brake Switch SBS, is an effective solution designed for motor braking. It operates by shorting the motor phases once STO is activated on the drive. This process results in a rapid and safe motor stop, significantly decreasing the time required for the vehicle to come to a complete standstill. The SBS system features dual power switches for each motor phase, enhancing reliability and meeting safety category 3, performance level D standards. Its solid-state nature allows for immediate response, and the built-in self-test function ensures operational readiness. Additionally, it includes comprehensive diagnostics for failure reporting. From the STO perspective, SBS functions as a link between the safety PLC and the motor drive. It receives the two safety control signals from the safety PLC and relays them to the motor drive. The motor phases are connected to both the motor drive and the SBS using dual connectors. When the STO is triggered, the power stage is turned off, resulting in the motor phases floating. Then, after a brief delay, the SBS initiates a three-phase short. Furthermore, the SBS can take control of the motor's brake, engaging it after a delay determined by the product variant, to ensure the motor is at a complete stop. To further improve braking torque, SBS employs a patented technique where the three-phase short is pulsed through the motor phases, rather than applied constantly. This approach enables the motor to stop even faster than it would with a simple constant three-phase short, as varying PWM duty cycles produce different levels of braking torque depending on the motor speed. The products can be ordered with a fixed PWM duty cycle based on the application's needs. Now, let's move on to a real-world example. The product variants are differentiated based on the power connectors, brake supply type, main or auxiliary battery, brake delay, and three-phase shorting PWM duty cycle. This concludes our presentation. Discover more about our products and easily place your orders online at www.robotech.com. Thanks for watching. That was quite an impressive illustration and definitely will increase um, safety in general. Um, we're okay. done now with all the videos. I'd like to change to the Q&A session. Yes, okay. Let's start with uh, the first uh, question. Uh, Harry, can you reply for the short for the SBS? Uh, 
Yes, okay. Regarding the question that Christoph did, uh, so regarding fast stop module, I have a question. Why fast braking is performed by mo short motor LEDs? Is it possible to use it while there is no remote power supply and only lo logic power is provided? Uh, I have two questions, two, re two responses on this. Uh, so if you have uh, no VMOD on your system in general, uh, SBS will not work. So so, so in general, you cannot have an, a properly functioning SBS without VMOD. But in the case that you do have VMOD and your machine, in the case that it has to, it has already started emergency braking, like fast stop braking, uh, and there is, uh, and you lose your VMOD, then it keeps uh, a short. Uh, it, st it stores uh, a small voltage inside, so it can keep braking for up to five seconds more than uh, from the point that you lose your remote. In the uh, in the modules that have the, the PWM braking, this uh, braking is uh, significantly less because the voltage that is stored inside will drop significantly quicker. But also the deceleration doesn't last uh, long usually, so this is okay for most of the cases. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, it's it will it will break. So usually you will be able to stop in this uh, in this time period five seconds. So next question is: What are the needed steps to replace an FBL with the successor? Uh, in terms of um, of uh, hard hardware it's the same so you just replace it there is no difference in wiring and uh, where the connectors are and all these things uh, you can keep same configuration but you don't have all the extra features so we recommend to tune from the beginning by adding uh, also the feed forward uh, uh, terms and the decoupling that uh, that we use. So it is recommended that um, do all, uh, add all the configuration is needed, so you have enabled all the new features of the FBL gene. There also one difference in the if you use can open. There is also one difference in the transmission type. So 255 transmission type is like 254 with uh, FBLG. But if you are in this process, please reach out to us through help desk so we can uh, uh, support you in these steps and this will happen very smoothly without any difficulties. Okay, next question will, will be the SBL 2360T, it is discontinued already, the, the SBL 2360. But we still support it if you have any questions about this. How was the calibration process of the motor driven in the robot we saw earlier carried out? Is the Windows-based computer also moving in the platform? Yes, the, 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 the laptop is on the AGV. And then uh, with TeamViewer, we have access to this, uh, to this uh, drive. To, to this laptop, sorry. Uh, I don't understand this question. Is it possible to achieve 16 kilohertz loop for torque control via, via CAN open? We do have 16 kilohertz uh, torque loop in the drives, <clears throat> in the G4 drives, not in the F, in the previous generation. <clears throat> So if you <clears throat> if you are using the G version, then um, you send torque commands through can open. And if you mean that, yes. If there is uh, any clarification uh, more for this uh, question needed, please uh, let us know. Um, OK, 
There's one question that comes quite frequently. We have heard about the new generation four, the brushless motor controllers. Uh, question that comes often is, uh, will there be a DC version? And if so, when? Yes, DC version will be available about beginning of August. The firmware will be, will be ready and you can uh, just use this firmware to the G version products. And another question that might be interesting of most of us is uh, about the ILD60. We've just heard about it. Will there be different versions and sizes? Yes, I, I can't tell when. There, there, there will be some uh, 089 with, with the motor that we have the 089 size and the 040 size. There, it is planned to have um, uh, um, these sizes, uh, integrated drive with these motor sizes also. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I see Klaus mentions also in, in the question about SBL, uh, very, yeah, very good point that SBLG is a, a one to one replacement to SBL. So you don't have to worry that SBL is discontinued. We ha you have a replacement that uh, you can uh, continue with your applications with much safer products because running in 16 kilohertz in the current loop prevents uh, many damages that could happen uh, through ha due, due to high currents or fast uh, raising currents that we wasn't able to detect with uh, the one kilohertz that we had earlier. So is it frequency? Is it frequency for internal loop only, not for control data? Yes, 16 kilohertz is only, of, only for the current loop. Speed loop is at one kilohertz and position loop is one kilohertz. So also the rest of the process is running one kilohertz. The script uh, that updating a command is at one kilohertz also. For, for questions might come, I'd like to use the time quickly for our second and last poll. The question should appear now on your screen. First question, are you interested in other HEV products such as shunt regulator, line follow sensor, HEV kits, safety brake switch, or charging systems? You can choose the one and click uh, submit vote. And the next question, did you know that Anxiety Fister Sensors and Power offers a wide range of sensors, power supplies and other customized products? Yes or no? And submit vote. And would you specific, would specific support or training accelerate your progress? Yes or no? That's it about the poll. Thanks a lot. This will help us. Your answers will help us to improve our service and support. So it's appreciated to answer them. <coughs> Do we have any more questions? Looks like not. If so, you still have the chance to enter the questions later on in the chat. We will answer them or you can contact us directly. 
Since there are no further questions for now, I'd like to conclude and I'd like to thank you for your participation and interest in this webinar. I particularly like to thank you, Athanasios and Harris, and the rest of the team for supporting me in preparing this webinar. And, yeah. Um, Sorry. Yeah, we thank you also for hosting us here and uh, giving the chance to present some of our products and features. And um, thank you for everything you did for this. You've done for this uh, webinar. We always work closely to support all the needs that come from your clients. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Let me just note there is one more question here uh, from Christoph. Uh, third, just it is the close. release. It is the release. The, the, or the third generation, uh, Christoph is asking. Oh, oh, sorry. 3.0 firmware. No, it will not be for the third generation. It's only for the generation four. Five, uh, yeah, four. Okay, and then for your information, this um, video we just cut throughout the webinar will be available public. So if you have, um, you need to look back, get the information, there's always a chance to see at it again. Um, I guess um, if you encounter issues with setting up your remote controller after what we learned, you're probably able to help yourself. If not, we are happy to help. And um, I'd like to thank you. And see you next time. Have a good day. Yeah. Many thanks thank you to everybody. My side. Yeah, and thank you all of you that attended this uh, webinar. Yeah. And um, hope to see you in good uh, applications like uh, running together with success uh, projects.